Bonus era, it's music time, or uh, programming time, not music time. I just swapped on my music. It's programming time. I have not done a programming stream since, I think, August. So that's fun, even though it's kind of my thing. Uh, today, we will be going over some of the changes in... Where's my hotkey for this? Hotkeys. Scenes. Capture groups. In... VTube Studio API has added a couple new things since the last time I got to work on this. Uh, this is from my Unity library. Gramming? Gaming? No, I don't play video games. Tomorrow I might, but I don't usually. 
Uh, so, there's one new normal function I've got to add, which is quite useful. Uh, it's a request you can make to the VTube Studio API that will then open up a menu in VTube Studio and give users a list of all their art meshes, and you can select a number of them. Upon hitting submit, it returns the request uh, with the list of art meshes selected. This is very useful for me in particular with the plugin that I've got, which asks users to supply a list of art meshes. Uh, so looking forward to getting this integrated. And then there's a bunch of new event type things. Uh, so that's what we're going to be doing today. Fortunately, last time I streamed this, I tore my hair out uh, getting the event system working because it has very intense polymorphism, which is to say objects can have variable different fields and they're all very similar to each other. Uh, but I got it working, which is good. Uh, so I, do, I only have to make new models now. Or uh, new new data models now. I don't have to figure out how to get the system together. Alright, so we've got our request. Let's begin. Pop this guy up over here. And so we need to go to our models section. I should also make sure that I'm on the correct branch real quick. Let me check. All right, I, yes, I am. Okay, cool. Programming slash amateur gramming. Oh, you're very funny. See, I'm too unfunny to get that. You get the, <laughs> you get the laugh track. Right? <laughs> Meanwhile, over here, I'm like, uh, which one of these am I? <laughs> That's me. I totally missed the joke. All right, so, uh, where'd my, where'd it go, where'd it go, where'd it go? Models, 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 models. So I've got a section down here for events. And I want to keep these separate, so event API, it's one section. We once again follow the pattern. This data definition file coming in at a thousand three hundred lines so far. I should probably split this up, but I don't really care that much. I might split the events out as a separator. Serializable. Heart mesh. How different is the response from the request? Hold on, I gotta read this. Uh, it's so back to the actual API itself here. It's I'm looking at the model. We have a list of active art meshes here. What is this for? There we go. What is this for? The activated deactivated art meshes return the active art meshes and inactive art meshes arrays respectively. That's for returning though. Oh, okay. It is cool. Uh, I'm, I'm happy to see it working. Right now I'm having a really frustrating problem where for a very small subset of users, uh, the WebSocket will just automatically get rejected by VTube Studio after like a short couple seconds, and I cannot figure out why. The logs that they give me all say that the remote host, i.e. VTube Studio, is just terminating the connection, and then the VTube Studio logs do not indicate that they're ever being connected to at all. Hello, Benny. 
but it's very frustrating because it makes it feel like there's a ticking time bomb where I'm clearly doing something wrong, but I can't figure out what it is. Okay, so this... Active art meshes. Okay. So back to VS Code. And our meshes are strings. That's fine. Uh, this extends BTS message data, like so. This dot message type. Uh, I don't remember what it was. Already forgot. Now I have to define a data class. What did we have in here? Oh, oops. There we go. Okay, what was the message type? Hello, welcome. I am updating a library right now. Very exciting stuff. Uh, okay, so this has that. What else do we have? Text override, help override, count. Let's just do this for now. So something like that. So we're going to have public string text override, public string help. Yeah, yeah, it's all it's all WebSocket based because uh, it's asynchronous. So the application VTube Studio runs a local web server against localhost. Uh, you can change the port or whatever, and then every plugin is meant to connect to it via the WebSocket. Makes a lot of sense. Uh, if you can't do stuff synchronously, uh, then yes, it makes sense to have it be a WebSocket because otherwise, your alternative is what HTTP. So pretty good uh the most recent update which is what i'm making stuff for today other than this one function uh is all event based which is to say a lot of the vtube studio api does kind of behave as though we're trying to be http or trying to be synchronous where you send one of these requests and then uh, a response is returned to you and they're matched on a request id so that's how you know that this response is for this request since it's not technically synchronous um, but the event api that Denshi has added is a thing you register for with a callback, and then every time a thing changes in the program, it proactively pushes to you uh, without you needing to make a new request. Do the plugins still run in the same process? I'm not sure what that means in this case, because they're separate executables, or sometimes web pages, or, or what have you. So, what do you mean in the same process? Do you load them into VTube Studio? No, they are separate. There are they're separate containers. Mine's an executable. It runs entirely in its own. Okay, cool. Yeah, it's it's not like a, a VTube Studio is not like dynamically loading a code, uh, code set or anything like that. It is that completely black box, only connected via a WebSocket. No no hot loading of any resources in VTube Studio. Everything has to go over serialization, I/O as JSON, which is good and bad. Good in that you have a lot of freedom over how you containerize stuff. You can make a web page that connects with a WebSocket. There are a lot of web tools. Uh, my heart rate plugin is a Windows application because I need some drivers uh, for things like Ant Plus, which you just can't do over JavaScript. Uh, I'm sure there are more creative things that people can do, uh, but it's nice. You get a very good separation of concerns. And it also means you don't have to worry about plugins behaving maliciously and like fucking up your model. They have no way to access like uh, core model data or anything like that. You can't, like, install a backdoor to, you know, fish somebody's model out of VTube Studio. Just, it, you can't get there. There's no arbitrary code execution exploit or anything like that. Uh, public 
int requested art mesh count and then It is interesting. Okay, so we've got the data here, which is good. Next one is the response that we get. Almost the same. Modern language plugins. Yeah, it makes sense. Like, I think it makes sense. Everything's a, a separate black box. Total separation of concerns. You don't have to worry about any kind of cross-contamination. Stuff like that. Uh, I think that's probably good. Alright, do these have any similar... They have an active art meshes field, which is the same. But otherwise, it looks like it's just... Um... Boom. Like that. Very cool. Alright, so we've got our model. Now we need to go into the handler, which is where did I put this? Networking. I should have like a core core package. This guy right here. Wait at the bottom here. Oops. Add a new case for the new event type, or the new response type. Um, I'm going to put this above the event subscription response. I want that to be the last one, because that's kind of like a different domain. Uh, so the, the request to subscribe is still synchronous like this. Or, air, again, air quotes synchronous. Uh, but then events go through a separate processor. So this is art mesh selection response is the name of this. If we get back a response with this, we do this dot callbacks response dot request ID on success. Very fun inline function. This dot JSON, which is our JSON deserializer, user supplied dependency from JSON, VTS, art mesh, response data, data. And then we do break. So when we get back a response that matches the... This whole thing is a giant processor that basically figures out what we're supposed to deserialize our payload into because it's just a random string. We check based on message type. So if we, if our list of callbacks has this response ID or the request ID that we made, we then figure out based on the response what we're supposed to turn it into and invoke the corresponding on success callback. Otherwise, we invoke an on error. And this whole thing is wrapped in a try catch for the error as well. And then events are handled by seeing if our event registry contains uh, that message. So basically two separate processors. If it's not in one, check the other. And uh, all set. Okay, so we've done that. Now I need to go to the VTube Studio plugin class, which is the ancestor class for all of these things. Events, general API, what's that? General API wrapper. All the way at the end here. Uh, public void. Uh, and this is going to have uh, how do I want to do this? You've got a couple of fields that are all optional. How do I want to do that? How do I, I can make a bunch of overloads, I suppose. Uh, or I guess I'll just have to note that you leave the string blank if you don't want to override. Uh, 
a string. What were they again? I already forgot. It's, it's like overriding your help text. And, oh, okay. Text override, help override. That, uh, int count, and then params, uh, string, like that, and then we're going to do That everything follows a pattern. It's very easy, which is why I'm able to deal with a class that's a thousand lines long like this. It's fine. It's totally fine. Uh, so we make our new request. We do requ uh, set all of our functions. And then we do uh, request dot uh, count. What is it? Request all data dot. And then this dot socket dot send. Oh, and I forgot that I need to include... Oh, shit, that's that's actually annoying. I was hoping I could just do params here, which means you can have a trailing list of however many strings you wanted here. This has to just be an array. This has to be a... Like a... Can I do a collection? Can we use collection for this? Namespace collection is not found. Why not? I'm literally using system.collections. Is that not what they're called? I just need something that I can turn into an array. Any kind of list is fine. Single 8,000 line file. Yeah, we're getting there. My model depths, like I, I said, are 1,300 lines long. Uh, yeah, 1,364. And they're about to get even longer tonight. What's good, brother? Not a lot. Uh, I'm updating an open source library because I need to. Why can I not use collection here? I collection? Is that what it is? Okay, wait. And then can I do two array? Why can I not do two array here? Yeah, it's I collection. You're correct. It is an interface. Um, how do I... Let's let's Google this. Uh, I just need to be able to turn this to an array. All right, so we're gonna do. That. And then. I think that's what we want to do. What is array index? Just where to start, I guess. Zero. You made a corny joke. How corny are we talking? 
Don't make me mute you as well. Okay, so then we can pass in any kind of collection of, of strings. Anything is fine. List, array, what have you. Uh, that's good. And then we need to do quite a lot of parameters here. Uh, how do I format this usually when I've got so many parameters? Gundam and underwear. I actually uh, bought some Gundam underwear not too long ago. Pretty exciting stuff, but I'm listening. Uh, there's a Japanese department store that's doing a collaboration, so I bought uh, some Xeon underpants. Action. Uh, Oh, this is a long-ass method signature. Gunderwear, you're so right. Oh, there's like no pretty way to format this. It probably won't look so bad when I don't have my text as blown up as it currently is. that okay so this in theory works uh so now we can test it go to where is it where's my example plugin this guy meshes uh, we're gonna do uh, this dot quest art mesh selection nothing nothing two uh, that's not how you do that empty list Success and failure. Hello, can I have a little request? You can certainly try. You may certainly try. Hello, Kempole Kempoleo, I think. I'm assuming the J is pronounced like a Y. You can certainly try. OSS library, open source uh, software, yes. Sorry, sorry, sorry. OSS is open source. You can get it from the GitHub link at the bottom of my stream. What's the request? I'm dying to know. Don't all jump at once, though. Okay, so then we've got our success and error. So on success, let's just do a debug log of uh, s two string, which should just print out a JSON, and then debug error e dot two string. Nothing fancy. Let's see if this function works. This should open a prompt in VTube Studio, so it'll actually make my uh model here bug out for a second, which is the desired effect. Now we go over to Unity. Open sauce spaghetti. You're so right, Benny. Uh, let's see. Alright, get scene color. You're getting replaced with a different function now. Oh, wait, here, that's right, that's right. I, I don't have to do debug log. I can do uh, this dot text dot text. I'm so curious what uh, Kempaleo's request was. I'll never find out. I'll never know. Okay, so if I hook this up correctly, sample plugin, get art meshes, uh, let's maximize on play to make this really visible. Okay, so now when I click request art meshes, my... Hey, nice. Uh, it's not super visible, um, 
But you can see a thing popped up on the side of the screen, right? Uh, that is the list. We pick an art meshes tonight? Nice, exactly, yeah. Uh, I finally got this added to the library. You can't quite see it. I don't really want to move over my... Oh, what the hell? Oh, no, it's cut off anyway. Doesn't matter. Uh, but yeah, so now I can select... Wow. wow, exactly. I can select two of these. I'm going to select my glasses, shining, uh, and my... Uh... My, eye, my right eyebrow. And I've returned that. And... Oh, that's not very helpful at all. I thought my two string was, um... Inherently a... That's not helpful. Hold on. That's not right. That's not right at all. Uh... Got to go back to the top here. State data, common. Message data. Did I not? Okay, this should have a public override uh, to string like this. And this is going to return... Oh, I know why this doesn't have a... What I wanted to do. Because I wanted to make this portable and not use the Unity library for JSON. I'm so used to every other thing that I do that deals with JSON having a uh, two-string method that just prints out uh, the JSONified version of it. But in this case, the JSON is a injected dependency. So let's do that at the plugin level. Uh, example plugin. Yeah, we do like this. Though I have to assume it worked. I'm just going to be very sure that it worked. Lua, what are you up to tonight? I know you're extremely busy at all hours of the day, so I'm assuming you're slaving away at something. Possibly NDA, possibly not. What's good? What's good? What's good? Did that work? Alright, let's request art meshes. Other window is currently open. Oh, it is open. Never mind. Normal model commission. How how droll. All right, we've selected two. Wow, that's a lot of text. Let's see, what do we got here? Let's dissect this JSON. Oh, okay, it's because it's just got all my other art meshes that are not selected. That's cool. So we know the ones that are active, and we know the ones that are not active. But it's a V-Bridger. Everybody's fancy favorite toy. Fun fact to people watching the chat who probably have no idea what this means. V-Bridger, a very popular VTube Studio plugin, one that is commercially $15 on Steam, was made using this library that I'm updating right now. Uh, it is a Unity app. VBridger is a plugin that connects the like AR core from your iPhone to like do better face tracking. It's got like the the better face tracking iPhone stuff, and it pipes it into VTube Studio. And if you build your model around having that degree of precision for your face tracking, you can get some really impressive effects. I think. I don't know. I use a 14-year-old Microsoft webcam for doing my VTubing, so I don't know anything about anything. But I don't have eyes or lips, so... Okay, this seems correct. This is doing its thing. We can move on to the rest of the events now. Uh, bu -bu 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 VS Code. But yeah, VBridger, very popular, very high-end, very powerful piece of software made with this library very happy about it. Alright, let's add some events. Don't need to make a new subscription. Event config is good. Event data is good. That's good. I gotta remember how I set this shit up, though. Uh, I mean, I'd just like a rest of my body, or like hands first, before I need lips, but whatever you want to do, Bong. You're the rigger here. With all that free time I know you have. I, I don't remember at all how I set this shit up last time. Test event config options. Test event subscription request data. 
So this is making a subscription request. I don't remember how any of this shit works. We're all in the free time club here. My schedule is getting better. Uh, like I, I am crossing things off the list this week, which feels good. Um, okay, let's go to the... Let's go to the browser here. Uh, events. The worst it's ever been. That's awesome. In like a biblical sense, I mean. That's like awe-inspiring. Alright, so what are the events that we already had versus the ones that he's added? The, the malevolent Denshi. We've got a test event. Okay, so these are the only two events that existed last time I touched this in August. So we've got one, two, three, four, five to add now. Um, event name is test event. We've got our config. I don't remember how this shit was set up at all. So... This is going to be a fun ride. It looks like we do something like this. God, this looks like a pain in the ass. Oops. Where's my where's my code? I thought I just copied it. Uh, so we've got a request data object here, and we have to make a config object. And then I would assume a response somewhere. Event subscription response data. But that's when you're subscribing to the event. I should have I should have left comments here. I, I am killing myself. This is not conducive. Comments and code. Yeah, I need to make this code uh, 1500 lines long. Is the problem. I also need to make my cl class names even longer. This rolls off the tongue, right? BTS tracking lost event subscription request data. Delicious. All right, we've got that. One struct name is a haiku. You're so right. At least we don't have factories. You're you're so right, MC. You're so right. Uh, where is my example config here? Where the fuck is this defined? Oh, it's like at the very end here. This is for a... Oh wait, no, hold on. Am I doing the right thing? What are my event types? What do I even have here right now? Uh, let's collapse everything. I might be getting ahead of myself. Collapse that. Test event. Model. Okay, we do have model loaded event. That's good. Um, and we have our tracking. There are too many classes. This is this is too much to think about. Bomb left the gardening supplies outside, and it's going to rain tomorrow. How embarrassing. I, like, don't remember how I laid this out. And I've got my text too big to read. Because I made it really big and visible for the stream. So it's hard to see everything at once. Okay, hold on. So for a single event... This is such a fucking nightmare. We have the subscription request, the event config, and then the data that comes back from the event. 
I guess. So now we've got this tracking lost. And we're going to have... Tracking lost event config options like that. Okay, I'm beginning to remember how this works now. That's from model loaded, unloaded. That's that one. I guess this isn't just tracking loss, this is just a tracking event, because it's tracking lost or found. I think we're good. Why is it complaining? Tracking config options. That's what I called it, isn't it? Oh, tracking event config options? Is that what I normally call these? Event config options? Loaded event config options, yes. Okay. Cool, we've made kind of a data structure. This is why I hate the event API, uh, for what it's worth. Alright, the config has nothing in it. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Denshi. You heard me speaking ill of your wonderful creation. It's just got too much polymorphism in it for me. I I, I don't care for the polymorphism. Uh, is the event data... I gotta think more abstract. I tried to last, you remember, I think you were here. Last time I tried to solve this back in August, I ended up trying to make a function that had like five generics or some shit like that. It was just completely untenable. Um, but I, I just have to deal with having a lot of boilerplate code now. Okay, so the tracking events, what do we get back? There's nothing in the config. Literally nothing. So that's a cool class that we've got right here. Very good, very fun. You have no idea what I'm doing right now. I'm adding the remaining events. I got the art mesh uh, selector normal API request working. So now I'm onto the remaining events that we have to add to uh, the event API. I just it's, it's a chore. It's literally a chore. Quick rule. I thought you had to go to sleep early anyway. You were talking about how like this is at 2 a.m. your time and you can't possibly be caught being awake at that hour. Denshi known for his great sleep schedule. Okay, so now let's see in our WebSocket here, we have to add a new event type. Tracking. I already forgot what the type is called. Tracking status changed event. that uh and then in the plugin class denshi what's the longest individual file you have in your unity uh project i'm curious because like my model definition here is uh now we're approaching 1500 lines 14 
hundred lines of, of data definitions in this one class. What's what's your record? What's good? What's the score to beat? Let's see. It's your niece's birthday. Hachi machi. This doesn't need a config. That's a lie. In case you change it later, I should make them pass in a... Hmm. Okay. Gang, I need I need a I need a decision here. So my pattern so far has been for all these event subscribing things. You pass in this config object uh out of the box, and then it will do its subscription under the hood. Um Okay, cool. I'm I am going to pass you tonight. I will almost certainly eclipse 1,700 lines because I have four more event types to add uh, to my data definitions. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it doesn't sound great. Um, okay, so my question for you guys is: This is subscribe to tracking event right here. Uh the pattern is typically you pass in a config object and then you have your callbacks for the various things happening. But in this case, the tracking event has a config object with no parameters. It literally just exists to fill up space. Should I remove this from the signature or should I add it to the signature in the event that Denshi adds properties to the event later to the config? I don't know what they would be. But then if I had to add this to the signature, it would be a breaking change. So I'm not sure what I should do here. I feel like people are going to be confused if they have to pass in a config and there are no properties on it. I'm going to I'm going to not make them pass one in. This is going to be a new like that. All right, cool. And then the event type here is uh, VTS tracking event data. Wanted to refactor, but you never did. If I ever had properties to config, they would be non-breaking. No, but I'm saying um, in my signature here when I'm telling people to subscribe, because currently the config has no properties, do I even... Like, my, my pattern has been subscribe to model loaded event. Cool. First thing you pass in is the config. The second thing is the callback that happens uh, when you get the event. Third thing that happens is... Or the, the third argument is the callback that happens when your subscription is successful and then we have an error case in the case where there's nothing in the config do i just have them pass in a blank one or just not tell them to pass in anything at all is my point i know your changes won't be breaking but mine would be because i'd be updating the signature of this function i have opted to cross that bridge when i get there such looks correct to me that's fine that's fine i'm basically trying to figure out if i need to make the user pass in a blank object because it might not be blank in the future i 
we'll just simply add another signature if, in the event that they need to pass one in, and then the old one will be the old behavior of no uh, parameters. Or fuck it, it's just a breaking change, that's fine. Like, they'll notice when their code doesn't compile, and they'll be like, oh, I have to add this one thing. It's not like it totally ruins everything, it just needs to add one more thing. Okay, that's one event down. We can do it, gang. So we have to make three new data structs per event. Which is exciting. But we can do it. Why is my... Who's pinging me? Ah, never mind. Uh, next up is... Background changed. Interesting. Interesting event type here. Yeah, I mean, all this is is a wrapper. I'm not claiming to invent any, like, brilliant mathematical, you know, functions here. I'm not doing any important work for anybody. I'm literally just making a wrapper. Denshi's the one who's done all the hard work. Denshi's the one who's made the code actually function. Not me. Uh, this is the... such once again a do nothing config that has no properties that's fine patterns and structure are important so I don't mind I understand add the docs that point to the other docs I did not check out the model outline thing. Is that in here? Is that something we're going to get to today? Removed, resized, rotated. Model outline change. That's going to be a fun one. No, I haven't. I have not touched this at all. Yeah, this is like the the Twitch integrated throwing system update. This is very, very cool and important for some very specific plugins, I think for sure. Because now people won't necessarily need to do the calibration step, I would think. Anyway, where were we? Uh, background change. Background name, my cool background. We love it. Love that for them. Background change. Event subscription. For more information about what each field does, there are no fields, uh, go to this URL. Very good, very good. Very pug. Hello, Vor 2am. I love Vor at 2am. That's probably my favorite time for it, actually. How are you doing? Welcome aboard. Welcome aboard. Skello, skello. Oh, and, uh, yeah. Uh, the, the uh, Iron Mouse thing is very cool. All thanks to Lua. Absolutely all thanks to Lua. But, uh, it's, it's very nice to see. What did I just do here? I fucked up somewhere. Oh, I copied the wrong thing. I'm doing good. I'm glad to hear it, Vor2AM. We are updating an open source 
library right now. I mean, it's my open source library. I'm not making a pull request to somebody else. Uh, I don't know this. Ah, and thank you for the follow. Uh, welcome aboard. Welcome to the skeleton crew. There is a saying here in the underworld, which is, if it doesn't read rest in peace on your tombstone, you get drafted into the skeleton war. So you, by voluntarily conscribing here, have saved some poor draftee from getting, you know, drafted. We thank you deeply. All right, we just have one property on here. String background name. Love it. Great field name. Like that. And then once again, the event. I need to go through here at some point and make all of these um, event name, like all these names into constants somewhere. Thank you. Um, Cause right now I just have them as like magic number strings, which is not good. I wish this is one thing I like more about Java than I do C sharp is you can have, uh, you know, strings in Java. And you can't do that in C Sharp. They have to be primitives in C Sharp. But otherwise, then I can make message type its own enum class and have like specific values here. But I can't do that in C Sharp. The technology just isn't there yet. Oh, what's the error? What are we complaining about? I've done everything we've wanted. What's the error? Where is the error? Okay, we've done that, we've done that, we've done that. So now we just repeat the process again. Next up, we go to our WebSocket. Once again, I'll need that magic string value, which is why I wish it were a constant somewhere. And then that becomes a background changed event. Cool. So we've got that. Now we go to the plugin itself. Copy these. Have I had this typo? I, I just realized now it says sunscribes. That's exciting. subscribes to the background changed event Why is it not like that? That's definitely a class. Background changed event config options. Okay. Background changed. Cool. It looks good. It looks normal. Once again, I need the magic string value a third time right here. Subscribe from background changed event. Wow. 
Sunscribe, exactly, right? I love to subscribe. Like, comment, and subscribe. Okay, so that's good. Alright, on to the next one. What do we got? It's a pretty good pace so far. Model config modified. That's going to be a fun name for the config for this one. Because it's going to be model config changed config options. Is going to be the name of this class. <laughs> oh boy. Alright, well let's copy these fuckers yet again. VTS, Model Config Changed Event Config Options. Beautiful name for a class. Absolutely exquisite. All this shit is boilerplate and very similar. Not exciting to look at. Okay. Uh, now, what are the properties we've got here? that. Event subscription request stays the same. Right, let me get back to VS Code. There we go. And then what do we actually have in the config? Nothing! Another config with no data in it. Exquisite. Delicious. Um, this is going to be... we got hotkey config changed okay but it doesn't tell you what changed about the config it just tells you that it has changed is this i didn't even read it um is this so that when or rather so you don't need to pull for the list of hotkeys every frame is, is that why you do this because like right now in vts heart rate because i've got a module that's like ah fire this hotkey when you know, the, the heart rate hits a threshold. I have to pull for the list of hotkeys to see when they change every frame if they add a hotkey. Okay, makes sense. I didn't know what the term model config meant in this case. I thought that might have meant, like, your physics settings or, like, your parameter configuration. Because I don't read, and I actually don't know anything about Live 2D. I just, uh, like to make software and like to feel useful. So, so Denshi, what's up? What's up, Denji? Okay, it's it's a file listener, gotcha. I recently learned how to do a directory listener and a file listener in uh, C Sharp, and I feel very powerful. Okay. Gotcha, okay. That's very fun. I like the idea of a 
event that tells you if it was this one specific thing or literally anything else with no other specifier. Like, was it hotkeys or literally any other aspect of the model? Is this a hot dog or not a hot dog is the question. Uh, VTS... Yeah, I, I suppose. I don't know. Uh, and then in the plugin. Subscribe to. So this, this is what I'm talking about with all the generics. Look how many things are happening here. We've got a double generic in our subscribe function. Then I need to remember the magic string of model changed event right here. I don't remember why I need to know this, but I have to. So many generics. And then let me get the link again. I think we've got three more events to do, which actually shouldn't take much time at all. And then tomorrow when I'm awake, I will QA this, make sure that I haven't missed any of these magic string names or anything like that, or got, got my types mixed up. Um, and then I will publish this. This is, I don't even remember what version number this is of this library, but I will update the Unity store and update GitHub. I'll make a post about it. Why are you crying? What's happening? Why are you crying? Coming into my house crying. What's the issue? Okay, yeah, cool, two more, two more events. This is easy. I love patterns. I love patterns. They make things so easy. But Denshi, you're about to lose the record for longest uh, C sharp file. Oh, that's background change, so I don't need that. I am pretty sure. Background. Ah! Just add a, you gotta add some more hotkeys, and then you'll be fine. Uh, this is what's the new one called? Let's go back to our browser. Model moved, resized, rotated. Model moved event. Yeah, let's go with that. So that's our magic string. Model moved event. That's a nicer, shorter name. Not model move changed, model moved. And then up here in this guy, I need to. Moved. All right, and then what do we got? Anything on the config on this one? No, excellent. We love that. <laughs> what 
What I would do here is use reflection or a preprocessor step, pre preprocessor step, turn it into 2,500 lines of even worse code. Yeah, like a lot of this is really boilerplate. Like my um, subscription event is like this weird abstract monster, and in order to overcome Unity not figuring out how to properly serialize um, the polymorphic config file, I have to provide these like accessors. Oh wait, I'm not showing VS Code. Uh, I have to provide these like accessors that are just pointers to the data and that have this field because it just it was not having it otherwise. Um, so like this stuff all under the hood is setting up this object in a very generic way. No config. All right, so what do we got here? We've got it looks like this model ID, model name. And position, this looks like a data structure I've got somewhere else. Any, anywhere else in here? Position Y? Model position. Sugoi. I love reusing. Awesome. Already have the data type defined from the earlier function. Same kind of thing. Very cool. Love when that happens. Okay. Uh, and let me get the... URL. Cool. Let me grab the magic string, go to our event processor. Uh, this is BTS model moved events data, easy. Copy that one more time. Go to our plugin. Moved. Hi, Flair. Welcome. No, this is for the library that powers it, though. Uh, this is for the VTube Studio API. Um, plugin is done for a while. Uh, I don't anticipate needing to make changes to it anytime soon. Needing to make changes to it anytime soon. Uh, but there's a whole, like, event, uh, system that comes out of VTube Studio now, which is instead of having to make requests to get data, you subscribe up front, and anytime something changes, it will proactively tell you, uh, which is very, very efficient. It means you don't have to pull with a new request every frame of your program. Uh, you can just listen for when things matter. Um... Wait, have I been using the wrong thing? Uh, anyway, it's, it's very good. It's very efficient. I just got to support it now because lots of plugins, for whatever reason, use this library. Uh, too lazy to make their own, I suppose. I don't know. Uh, I think I used the wrong URL here. I did. Copied the wrong one. Okay, so over here. Model moved. What's the magic string? It is this guy. Nice. One more to go, and I, I think we'll be all set. 
Got our subscribe, unsubscribe. And... The final boss. This one should be exciting, though. Denshi's looking forward to this. Model outline change. This is a big deal. It gives you a bounding box for your live 2D model. And I guess sends you points. Uh, I'm not sure what the data you get back is to interpret it. Um, very cool, though. Whoa, there's a config here. Wow. The model outlines very, very useful, yes? Okay. Well, fortunately, these are just vector twos. Should I make a class that's a, like a coordinate for this? Or should I just save these as vector twos? Convex hull. Convex hull center. Window size. These are all vector twos. I've decided. Um, okay. Very cool. One last rodeo here. Save that. All right, Denshi, I think you win. Uh, this is only getting to 1,660 lines, not 1,700 yet. But when you add more events, we'll get there. We'll get there. Uh, what is this called again? Model outline event? gonna have uh, one of these guys One day he'll break 2,000 lines. It is a, remember, it is a contest. This is a thing that is a high score, uh, scored event. So. Huh? It shouldn't already contain a class with this name. Did I fuck up somehow? Oh no, uh, I, cop I renamed the wrong thing. I'm pretty sure. Yep. There we go. And we get back uh, public vector two. Oh, fuck, right. Because um, I, like, don't have any Unity library in here at all. Is there, like, a C-sharp coordinate class? I don't want to have to make my own struct for this. That would be really dumb. Uh, let's see. Point? Or a point class?
because like my whole goal with this library is to have it be as independent from Unity as possible, right? So I like I'm literally only using System up here. Um, so I don't have a vector two. What version of .NET CLR? I have no idea. Why? Is there like a good answer or a bad answer? Yeah, I guess I'll make a struct. Wait, no, it can't serialize read onlys. I should make a uh, helper class to turn that into a vector two. I think. System.numerics.vector2. I just need a tuple, really, is more than anything. Okay, what are these what are these parameters all called? Convex hole, convex hole center and window size. Got it. Wait, but that's not... Window size isn't a point. Um, what the fuck is the name for these? It's just a tuple, right? Do I just call it tuple? Because I was like, coordinate? No, because window size isn't a coordinate either. Ugh. That's nasty. Whatever, it's fine. I am, however, going to move this... So somewhere where I'll remember it exists, which is up here. Vector 2. Well, we'll figure that out tomorrow when I look at this again. And then I'm going to test this subscription event uh, and then I'm going to call it for the day. Let me get the URL. Because I think this one will be good to look at. And then I'll feel very accomplished. Got that outline changed. Now I need the magic string name. Oops. Model outline event. Okay. Now we go to our WebSocket for the final time. Case. Like that. Go to here for the final time.
Hey, how's the dev going? We're actually almost done for the evening. I'm implementing the new outline function that Denshi rolled out right now, and that's the last new event. And then we're going to test it. Uh, I actually went pretty smoothly this time, because all the headache of figuring out how to do the event system I did for myself back in August. Uh, this is the event subscription. So I, I have a plan now on how to handle this. This is outline, events data. I was ready. I was able to hit the ground running. Ah, oh, uh, thanks for the, the gifted sub, Denji. Welcome aboard, Ren. Uh, you get to use all of my quality emotes. Wait, what the fuck? Moved event. There we go. I'm going to have to do a lot of proofreading on this tomorrow. Enjoy the emotes. Uh, model outline event. A lot of proofreading I need to do tomorrow. I'm seeing all these typos now. Draw them for me, and I will add more emotes. I am not a visual artist by any stretch of the imagination. I cannot produce my own emotes. So if you, uh, if you do, if you make one for me, I'll add it for sure. I'll even pay you for it. Uh, I did add a new sound redeem today. Uh, <coughs> this one, which I think will come up a lot based on uh, my general quality of streaming. I'm, I'm not kidding. Like, if you give me one, I'll definitely add it. And I'll pay you or whatever. Uh, but I am not a illustrator. Uh, so I will not produce my own. Had someone really talented close to me who could make emotes. I don't know. I don't know anyone like that. I am an island. I am a rock. I am an island. Okay, now in our example plugin here. Uh, let's do. If you tell me it's possible to do free labor, I will take it every time. Ah, uh, Lua, you're so wise. Uh, so wise. It doesn't let me do the buzzer. Really? Have I not enabled that for everybody? <coughs> Hold on. This simply cannot, cannot, I cannot bear the thought of this. Uh, Twitch... Dashboard. Why would it... Yeah, okay, there you go. Never mind. It's fine, then. <laughs> Skill issue, Denji. I don't want to tell you. Thank you. Okay, now we go back over to Unity. Uh, go to our subscribe thing on the right side here. Example plugin, sub outline event. We pass in true for the draw. 
Hey, that's my bounding box. Approximately. I guess my hair doesn't count, but that's fine. <coughs> yeah, I have no idea. Clearly you can use it more than once. This is very, very useful, Denshi. I like this. I like this a lot. Very good. Okay. Uh, everything works, I'm gonna assume. I'll check this over tomorrow. Give it a bunch of proofreading. See if I can maybe move things to constants instead of having the same magic string repeated like 25 times. Uh, but yeah, that works. That's good. That was a brisk hour and a half, 90 minute stream. That's a good question, because like, why is my hair not considered part of my bounding box? Can science explain? Why do I have a cone head? Denshi, explain yourself. You're being put to the sword right now. What, what say you? This is very cool, though. It's mesmerizing to look at. Alright, Denshi's out of here. Denshi left the second I said we were good. Oh, okay. Convex holes based on the center points of each art mesh. So, like, why do I look like that? Why do I have a cone head? I don't... I still don't understand. It's fine, though. I forgot that that's what I did for my item demo. It's just make it fly around your head. That's a fun one, because it involves swapping the uh, uh, Z index as well. The top point is probably the center of my hair art mesh, which is just one. I guess that makes sense. That makes sense. Cool, all this other stuff still works. Uh, yeah, I think we're, uh, I think we're all set here. Now, who's around to raid? And I finished just in time to catch the next day of the international Dota 2 tournament. I'm so pleased with myself. I've been staying up until, like, 3 a.m. every day watching that tournament, because it's in Singapore this year. Who's around to raid? Uh... Alright, easy answer. We are going to raid Tsukimi, who is quote-unquote just chatting. I always have a hard time spelling her name, though. Uh, yeah, that, that's it for me. Uh, bonus, Sarah, good night, that kind of thing. Uh, I'm glad the code works. Oh, I need to commit it. Let me, let me commit my code. Nobody did the commit reminder. You were all talking about the angry buzzer. Nobody told me to commit. Thanks for the stream. Happy to do it. Thank you for the commit reminder. Very, very good. Okay. Uh, let's go raid Tsukimi. I don't know what she's up to. She's quote-unquote just chatting. Let me go check, actually. So I can warn you. Oh, she just started. Uh, she's reading Creepypasta. That's what she's doing. Her stream title is Creepypasta Time with Two. Uh, so, go enjoy. Uh, go listen to some Creepypasta. Let it serenade you to sleep. Uh, I'll catch you tomorrow. I want to do Freedom Planet 2 at the same time, probably. Because uh, I want to finish that game before Sonic comes out. If I have to play Freedom Planet 2 and Sonic at the same time, I will die. Uh, and then Pokemon's the month after that, or like the week after that. A lot of games. So I'll, I'll probably catch you tomorrow night. Until then, uh, bonus error, good night. Good night. Thank you.